While Danny and Brinkley was on the phone, a lightning strike hit the line, sending a lethal charge through the wire into his body. The massive energy threw him into the air, leaving him motionless on the ground. His heart stopped, and paramedics declared him dead for 28 minutes. Brinkley recounts that, during that time, he went through a tunnel of bright light that enveloped him with a feeling of absolute peace. On the other side, spiritual beings awaited him, who seemed to radiate wisdom and compassion. During this experience, he received thirteen prophetic visions about the future, events that, according to him, would mark the destiny of humanity. From a scientific point of view, the electricity from a lightning bolt can discharge up to one billion volts in just a few milliseconds. This type of impact on the human body can induce ventricular fibrillation, a state in which heartbeats become chaotic, preventing effective blood circulation. Without rapid intervention, death is imminent. There are rare medical phenomena such as spontaneous resuscitation, also known as the Lazarus phenomenon, where the heart can reactivate without external intervention after a period of inactivity. Another possibility is residual brain activity, where certain brain functions can continue operating despite apparent clinical death. Brinkley not only returned from death, but his experience transformed his life forever. His journey was just beginning. In this short documentary, we explore the concept behind death. According to science, what is the spirit? And if there is truly a scientific explanation for our journey to another plane of existence when we die, or if in reality, every vision at this crucial moment at the end of our life is visions of the soul. But before this, let me tell you about Danian Brinkley, a man who was declared dead three times by medical science and yet is still alive today, returning to tell us what he saw in the other world. After his first near-death experience, Mr. Danian Brinkley suffered heart problems due to nerve damage. Over time, his heart weakened until in 1989 he needed bypass surgery. During the surgery, his heart stopped again, facing his second death. Just like in his first encounter with death, Brinkley describes returning to the City of Light, a place where beings of pure energy warmly received him. However, this time, instead of receiving new visions, they reminded him of the importance of his mission on Earth. According to him, the experience reaffirmed his purpose to help others and share what he learned from his near-death experiences. From a medical perspective, Cardiac arrests in the operating room are relatively common events in open-heart surgeries. Among the most common causes are anesthesia complications, which can affect cardiac and respiratory function, cerebral hypoxia, the lack of oxygen in the brain, which can induce hallucinations and near-death experiences, effects of anesthetics, which can create altered states of consciousness similar to vivid dreams. Some studies suggest that near-death experiences may be related to brain activity at critical moments. During a cardiac arrest, the brain can enter a state of hypoxia, leading to altered perceptions, visions, or sensations of detachment from the body. The possibility has also been investigated that these events are a manifestation of intrusive REM activity in which the brain experiences intense dreams while still being partially conscious. Brinkley returned to life with a renewed sense of purpose, 
but his story was not yet over. In 1997, he would face his third death and a new awakening. Despite having survived two near-death experiences, Danny and Brinkley continued to face health issues. In 1997, his heart failed again, causing another cardiac arrest. He was declared dead for the third time, something extremely rare in medicine. In this near-death experience, Brinkley felt that he was returning to the same dimension of light he had visited before. However, unlike previous times, this time he did not receive new visions of the future. Instead, the spiritual beings that accompanied him reminded him of his purpose on Earth. He should dedicate his life to helping others, especially those on their deathbeds. This third event marked a turning point in his life. After recovering, he began volunteering in hospitals and palliative care centers, accompanying people in their final moments of life. Brinkley's story is incredible, but what does science tell us about what happened? Is there a possibility that these visions Brinkley had have a scientific explanation? We are about to find out. The physiology of visions at death and the nature of the soul. During near-death experiences, NDEs, the brain undergoes a series of neurophysiological changes that can explain the visions and sensations reported by those who have been on the brink of death. Gamma wave activity. Recent studies have shown that in the moments before and after cardiac arrest, there is a significant increase in gamma oscillations in the brain. These waves, which oscillate between 30 and 100 hertz, are associated with higher cognitive functions, such as conscious perception, memory retrieval, and sensory integration. A study published in Philosophy, Ethics, and Humanities in Medicine observed that after the withdrawal of life support in terminal patients, some showed notable gamma activity in the electroencephalogram, suggesting that the brain remains active during the dying process. This increase in gamma activity could explain phenomena like the life review, where individuals experience a rapid recap of significant events in their existence. The synchronization of these waves in different brain regions could facilitate the integration of scattered information, generating a coherent and structured experience in critical moments. Release of neurotransmitters and neurological modulators. In situations of extreme stress, such as during a near-death experience, the brain releases various substances that can influence subjective experiences. Endorphins. They act as natural painkillers, reducing the perception of pain and generating sensations of euphoria and well-being. Psychiatrist Laura Ferrando points out that in the face of cellular suffering, the body releases endorphins, producing a pleasurable sensation that might explain the visions of light and peace reported in near-death experiences. Serotonin. This neurotransmitter is involved in regulating mood and sensory perception. It has been suggested that, during near-death experiences, a massive release of serotonin could contribute to hallucinations and feelings of transcendence. Multifactorial models suggest that the combination of cerebral hypoxia and serotonin release may be behind near-death experiences Dimethyltryptamine, DMT. Known as the spiritual molecule, DMT is a powerful endogenous hallucinogen. Although its exact role in near-death experiences is subject to debate, some researchers like Rick Strassman have postulated that the pineal gland could release DMT in moments of extreme stress, inducing mystical experiences 
similar to those reported in near-death experiences. However, this hypothesis lacks conclusive evidence in humans. Cerebral hypoxia. The lack of oxygen in the brain or hypoxia can lead to alterations in perception and consciousness. During a cardiac arrest, the decrease in cerebral blood flow can trigger a series of neurochemical and electrical events, resulting in unusual sensory experiences. Hypoxia can induce hallucinations and sensations of detachment from the body, common characteristics in near-death experiences. Scientific Perspectives on the Soul Could all of this then be a matter of the soul leaving our body? And if so, what is the soul? The notion of the soul has traditionally been the domain of philosophy and religion. From a scientific perspective, the concept of an immaterial and immortal entity that transcends physical existence is difficult to address due to the lack of empirical evidence. The subjective experiences reported during the near-death experiences, although deeply significant for those who have them, can be explained through neurophysiological processes without needing to resort to metaphysical entities. Neuroscience research suggests that consciousness and subjective experiences emerge from neuronal activity and synaptic interactions in the brain. Although much remains to be understood about the exact nature of consciousness, current models focus on explanations based on the complexity and plasticity of the nervous system. Therefore, from a scientific perspective, the soul could be interpreted as a manifestation of complex brain processes rather than an entity separate from the physical body. According to this, should we attribute this whole experience to DMT? DMT, the enigmatic molecule of consciousness. N, N-dimethyltryptamine, commonly known as DMT, is a psychedelic compound that has captured the attention of scientists, mystics, and mind adventurers alike. Present in various plants and in the human brain, DMT is famous for inducing intense and transcendental experiences that challenge our understanding of reality. What is DMT? DMT is a molecule belonging to the tryptamine family structurally similar to neurotransmitters like serotonin. It is naturally found in numerous plants, such as Psychotria viridis and Mimosa tenuiflora, traditionally used in brews like ayahuasca. Additionally, its presence has been detected in mammals, including humans, suggesting a biological role not yet fully understood. And precisely this presence in mammals, including humans, makes us wonder where it is produced. The great theory about DMT and the pineal gland comes out of here. Referenced in ancient texts and even in some modern studies. So, does the pineal gland produce DMT? The pineal gland, a small structure in the center of the brain, has been the subject of numerous mystical and scientific theories. Dr. Rick Strassman popularized the hypothesis that the pineal gland could produce DMT at crucial moments, such as birth and death, facilitating mystical experiences. However, the scientific evidence supporting this claim is limited. Research has identified the enzymes necessary for the synthesis of DMT in various regions of the rat brain, including the pineal gland, the neocortex, and the hippocampus. However, in humans, although traces of DMT have been detected in body fluids, its specific production in the pineal gland has not been confirmed. Therefore, the connection between the pineal gland and the production of DMT in humans remains a hypothesis without definitive confirmation. Research on DMT is ongoing, 
and each new finding raises more questions about its function in the brain and its potential connection with mystical and near-death experiences. Could this molecule be the key to understanding the nature of consciousness? Or is it simply another byproduct of the complex brain chemistry? Are you intrigued by the mystery of DMT and its connection to consciousness? Don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments about what you think of this enigmatic molecule. In upcoming videos, we'll talk more about it. I want to invite you to visit our health coach at tuvisalud.com. If you want to learn more about this topic, our coach is ready to help you. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. That way you help us create more content like this. See you in the next one. Hugs.